Well, welcome back. This is, uh, my name is Bill Donath. I'm president of the Logan County Genealogical and Historical Society. And we're continuing with the uh, Civil War series. And this is going to be number 13 out of that series. And we need to uh, introduce you to a new regiment today. So I'm going to do it a little differently than I've done in the past. I'm going to uh, give you the information about the 38th and the men who from Logan County who made up Company F of the 38th. So we're going to uh, be focusing just on that information and this is from research online that's fairly easy to get to. But Company F uh, was centered around Atlanta, Illinois. It was organized by James P. Meade of Atlanta and he was elected captain of the company as they <coughs> began their excursion through the Civil War. And uh, of course the company is made up of 100 men, 100 to 110. The beginning group for the Company F was 104 men and 93 of those men from were from Atlanta or Logan County. Some were from areas around uh, Atlanta, including parts of DeWitt County, McLean County, and Tazewell County. There were communities at that time uh, already established in those counties, and they provided some uh, men for this company. Men from Lawndale, Lincoln, and Broadwell also were in the company. And they started out with a 104. That was what the beginning roster was on August 23rd, 1861, when they were formally mustered at camp in uh, Springfield, Illinois. Uh, Butler, uh, Camp Butler became the camp for training Central Illinois companies and soldiers uh, after uh, Camp Yates was closed in the city of Springfield. The original muster date was uh, August 15, 1861, but they weren't a formal uh, part of uh, the 38th Infantry until the 23rd of August, 1861. And they, uh, of course, lost men due to illness or being killed or being invalided. So they had recruits come in and the total of the n total number for the full service of uh, four years with the 38th there were 134 men who served in Company F and we'll take a look at all of their names. At the end of the war those men remaining whose time hadn't expired yet were already were in Texas by that time and you'll find out that there were many other places before Texas but the company was the regiment was formally mustered out on December 31st 1865 we're going to start by looking at the regimental flag for the 38th infantry I have uh, not found any other regimental flags for companies and regiments that uh, contain men from Logan County. Uh, either they were not made or they were destroyed, but the 38th uh, had one that survived. Uh, we, then we'll go through the entire roster of Compa Company F. This information uh, is presented by the uh, National Park Service online and can be found on the website of the Secretary of State of Illinois as well. Now the uh, regimental flags, when I was a kid, um, we were taken on a class trip to Springfield and one of the halls we went into at the state capitol uh, had a, an enormous number of flags on poles uh, standing around and I think they were up high, close to the ceiling of this big room. But it was called the Hall of Flags. And it was supposedly the regimental flags of all the Civil War 
and other military actions by that time. So uh, a lot of these flags were, were there. And of course the Civil War flags, if they'd been there the whole time from after the Civil War to when I was there, they would have been there almost 90 years. When I went back as an adult, that flag and that room was empty. The flags were all gone. Um, and they moved all of those flags from the State House because of deterioration and conditions of the flags. And I imagine some of them just didn't um, survive the move, let alone being uh, have any preservation done to them. But you'll see in this that the um, flag has been restored or at least stabilized so that it does not deteriorate anymore. We'll take a look at those flags, or that flag, and talk about it and then we'll get into the roster. So we'll start there. All right, here is the flag I was telling you about. This is for the 38th Illinois Infantry Volunteers. From Logan County we had uh, Company F and that's what we're going to be looking at today. But let's uh, look at the flag. Now this was in the Hall of Flags in Springfield. You can see that by the deterioration we have here. We have some losses on this side and across these white lines. Apparently the white was a uh, less stable form of silk because most of these flags were silk. And you can see the striations of where the flag hung, and these are folds that were permanently there. Now, they, what they did with these flags, they preserved them as much as they could. We can see the backing that was added to this that's, that covers the whole back, and all of this is attached to that backing. So that the fringe, which was hanging down from here, at least this point, it would have been hanging this direction and then uh, so that's all been stabilized and all attached back the one across the bottom would have been the same that's all fringe down there so they have these flags now at Camp Lincoln at the National Guard camp in Springfield and the way I came across this one and this is the only one I have found for Logan County uh, units I went to Illinois State Military Museum, uh, which is just outside the camp. And I was asking about Civil War information and what had happened to all those flags that were in the flag uh, Hall of Flags. And they told me that they were stored at Camp Lincoln and they're in a, an environmental controlled room to try to uh, keep them from going bad any any further than this but like I said if a lot of these flags were older than this one because I don't know when it was put in the Hall of Flags that they would have hung there longer and this one probably ran hung there could have been as many as 90 years because I saw it in the 50s uh, I saw the hall in the 50s and the um, all the flags from the Civil War could have been as old as that. But I uh, imagine these flags were at the reunions until the last person had it. And then it was uh, probably donated to the, to the state. Okay, so let's take a uh, more, I like the display of the stars. It was a nice artistic application of the stars. And all through the war, there were always 33 stars um, because we had 33 states at the time of the start of the Civil War and none were removed for the states that were, uh, had seceded or tried to secede. But what we see on here are the designation for the 38th Infantry and it has Illinois VV Infantry. So we have uh, Illinois Regiment, Illinois Volunteer Infantry, the 2nd V, 
is for veteran. So 38th Regiment Illinois Volunteer Veterans Infantry. That tells me it was used at the um, reunions for this regiment and that would have to have been after the close of the war after they were all mustered out because to be a veteran you have to be mustered out in the service. Then in each of these 11 lines, 11 stripes, actually 10 now, we got this one taken care of. But these are battles that the regiment was involved with during the Civil War. Now, unfortunately for the 38th, there weren't enough lines on the flag to put all of the battles that they were in. So we'll be Later on, we'll, we'll see uh, the rest of the names of the battles that this uh, regiment participated in. So let's take a look at each of these lines individually. And the first one after uh, the name of the regiment is Fredericktown, Missouri. It was October 26, 1861. And if you remember, it's the seventh words at Fredericktown, but they were just chasing Confederates around trying to get them to go down into Arkansas. Then we had the Siege of Corinth in Mississippi. Then the Chaplain Hills, uh, it was also called Perryville in Kentucky. We have Knob Gap in Tennessee on December 26, 1862. Stone River, and I do have a typo there, I know. <laughs> You're going to tell me about it. It's December 31st, 1862 to January 4th, 1863. Um, Liberty Gap, Tennessee, June 25th, 1863. Chickamauga, uh, September 20th, 1863. The Siege of Atlanta in 1864. Battle of Franklin on November 30th, 1864, and the Battle of uh, Nashville on December 15th, 1864, which was the closing battle for the 38th, pretty much. The other battles they were in were Rocky Faced Ridge, Resaca, which is another fairly famous one, New Hope Church, Dallas, Pine Hill, Peach Tree Creek, Jonesboro and Spring Hill and then we have some statistics down below from uh, National Park Service regiment lost during service seven officers and 107 enlisted men killed and mortally wounded and they lost uh, three officers and 177 enlisted men by disease for a total loss of 294 now here's the roster that I was talking about and we'll go through this quickly but there are some terms we need to know you can see that we have the name of the soldier given we have his rank when he first entered service and his residence where he came from the date of muster would uh, be the beginning of his official membership in this company F so you see a lot of August 23rd, 1861, that would have been the day that they were into the 38th at Camp Butler. Uh, I've seen an August 15th date, but I think that's where uh, James Meade <coughs> started recruiting the men in uh, Logan County. And then we have remarks. The remarks uh, section tells us a little bit about the history of these soldiers uh, while they were in service. Uh, for example, uh, Richard Adams served all the way till um, fall of 1864 and the MO means he was mustered out. Now I know you people who have studied the Civil War know all this, but I'm hoping that we have some novice Civil War interested people who are looking at this too, so I'm doing this for them. Uh, it might be a old hat to you, but it might be new information for them. We also have the word recruit, and we can see recruit in here. A recruit is somebody who joins the 
company after it's already in service and they're replacing somebody who's been lost either by illness or being killed or being missing it, missed in action or just being on long-term medical leave. Substitutes, and we can see one down here. Uh, maybe, yeah, here's two subs here, three subs. And you can see they're none of them from Logan County. But, and uh, so they came in in 1866, or 1865 and served until the end of the war in 1866. So they must have transferred to some other unit because um, the 38th was mustered out December 31st, 1865. Okay, discharged, um, needs to be dropped from service. And if they have a disability, they would be discharged, of course. And then um, re-enlist we saw on the 7th, when we talked about the 7th Infantry, at the end of the initial enlistment of 90 days the fellows either re-enlisted in the same unit they were in or they went to a different uh, regiment that was forming a company in Logan County or just going to where family members might be joining up or where friends were joining up somebody that they might have might have wanted to be with Transfers, we're going to see transfers in there. Some of them are going to transfer to the Navy, some from infantry to uh, cavalry or infantry to artillery. Quartermaster is in here as well, and um, that would be soldiers who are responsible for supplies and provisions for the unit. POW camps, uh, we have two that recur through this list, and that is Andersonville and Danville, Virginia. To desert means to leave without permission and you'll see that a, lit, a little and it's usually with a substitute who is hopping from one regiment to another and they were paid by the person they were substituting for. Uh, I saw the figure of $300 once in, in the newspaper article that they would get paid that way and of course soldiers pay back then uh, started out at $11 a month and then was raised to $15 a month at one point um, I don't recall if it went up more than that during the war um, but these guys would jump from one substitute to another to pick up that $300 and then desert real quickly and you'll see that in here too and they will and then they uh, went to change their name used a different name to the next regiment and did the same thing so they were just stealing the money uh, reduced that means they've been demoted in rank for some offense while on duty. Invalid Corps, people were wounded and they had, were going to take a long time to heal, if they could heal. They would be um, assigned to the Invalid Corps and that eventually was changed to the Veteran Reserve Corps in 1864 because that IC, which designated Invalid Corps, also was used after they inspected materials and they were no longer in, able to be used they would call them inspected and condemned so they didn't want the soldiers thinking they had been inspected and condemned okay let's take a look at uh, some of these soldiers uh, I think we're all interested in seeing who did not come back George Addy of Atlanta was missing in action at Chickamauga. Nathan Baker of Atlanta was killed at Stone River. And Andrew Brady died of his wounds in 1864. They just don't say where he 
receive the wounds which battle. In this one we have uh, Disease Death at Ironton. That was William Burke. Uh, Horace Carpenter was wounded twice, once at Chickamauga and once at Chick Kennesaw Mountain. Samuel Craig died at Andersonville as a POW. And if you go to the Andersonville site um, and you have a name of somebody who died there, they may have the grave number. If they don't have a grave number, they may have been taken home to be buried there. Here John Curry of Atlanta. Oh, excuse me, Thomas Dalton of Atlanta was killed at Stone River. And David Davidson was killed at Stone River. Charles Freewood is missing in action at Chickamauga. And Henry Gardner died of his wounds in 1863. On this page, George Hayes died at Andersonville. Uh, see, there's no grave number here. So that uh, may mean he was brought home to be buried. Jess Horner of Atlanta was, uh, died at Andersonville. George was from Lawndale, and Alvin Hauser died at Andersonville Prison. Daniel Kenyon drowned crossing the current river, so he's one of the accidents. Um, I remember reading in a paper that this was not an uncommon thing, people drowning, getting in water that was over their uh, ability. Uh, Lorenzo Kenny died at Ironton likely of a disease. Wade Martin of Atlanta died at Ironton. Samuel McAfee of uh, Lincoln was missing in action at Chickamauga. John McGahan died at Ironton. James P. Meade, the captain who organized this company, was killed at Storm River. Samuel Mixed died at Andersonville. John Merle died at uh, Chickamauga. He was drowned after being taken as a, as a uh, POW. And George Norton died at Louisville. And they were uh, all Logan County men. Okay, Matt, uh, Booth Patton died at, or was killed at Stone River. Atlanta. Daniel Quisenberry of Atlanta died at Danville as a prisoner of war. Charles Russum died of disease. Roland Schote of Atlanta was missing in action at Chickamauga. William Schertz died at Nashville of his wounds. Alex Sturmer of Lincoln was missing in action at Stone River. James Sturmer was uh, wounded at some time. Thomas Stout was killed at Stone River. Gerald Turner died at Pilot Knob. Joel D. Wells, private from Broadwell, was killed at Stone River. John White of Broadwell uh, died in 1864. Albert Wilcox was wounded, but doesn't say where. Alexander Wiley died at Danville, Virginia, as a POW. James Wilkins was killed at Stone River. So our stats from this uh, list, we had eight killed in action and they were all killed at Stone River. It's a pretty bad day for uh, Logan County there. Missing in action, we had five, four at Chickamauga and one at Stone River. Dying at POW camps, we had eight. Five of those were at Andersonville, two were at Danville, and one was at Chickamauga. And the other, uh, we had nine deaths for a total of 33, but only seven of those guys were uh, from Logan County. Means Logan County lost 31 men in the uh, 
Company F 38th. Now, this is a print of a painting that I have in my collection, and it's the Battle of Stone River. Here is an artist's rendition of the uh, Andersonville prison. You can see how tightly packed they were. Seems to me they had over 30,000 in here. It's way over the amount that it was built for. They had 13,000 deaths. And you can see that there's no real way to stay away from the elements, no way to stay away from diseases. You got that river running right through uh, the camp. And this was a pretty swampy area down here. You'll see that in another drawing here. But the river just flowed right through. And of course, they had the latrine area down at this end at the exit end. Okay, so here's another showing more of the uh, valley effect uh, of that area. Here's an actual photograph of Andersonville showing how steep that slope was or giving an idea how steep it was and you can see the fence the wooden fence and the garden towers along the fence and this is the building in Danville Virginia that was used as the prison it held 7,000 and of course being in and out of the elements uh, there were fewer fewer deaths at Danville so there you have uh, Company F, the 38th. So now we know who these guys were and you've got something to go back to. If I mention a name, which I will be doing actually in the next video, because I have a very long letter from one of the uh, members of the Company F about their very first battle, Fredericktown. So we'll uh, get into that in the next video. Well, thank you for joining us, and thanks for watching, and I hope yeah, it was uh, pretty enjoyable. We'll see you in the next one.